Dr. Mifflin, who I think essentially needs no in introduction. Uh, he'll be talking about the accreditation, which uh, I'm sort of looking forward to after all the after all the stuff we went through uh, to get interviewed and everything else. Uh, it'd be nice to hear what's going on. I think um, Barbara and Elaine were originally going to give a presentation for Grand Rounds and something came up and they were going to talk about safety safety, but that's not happening. So I said, well, I'll, I'll tell people how the accreditation site will be run. And I don't know, Jeff, were you going to, did you have anything that you wanted to talk about or? Okay, well, we'll, I'll, we'll give you a little time. I'm only going to take five minutes or so and I apologize for the light content of Grand Rounds today. Um, the, uh, yeah, and anybody who wants more food after that beautiful graphic presentation, I think there's <laughs> some strawberry yogurt over there or something. <laughs> um, <laughs> so we had our accreditation site review um, two weeks ago, and uh, we had a site visitor who was a retired uh, pediatric orthopedist fellowship director and residency director in New York, and so he'd done that for quite a few years. So he was actually, of the three times that I've been through this, he was probably the person who was most, um, you know, kind of closest to what we actually do and, and really kind of understood uh, residency and, and uh, you know, uh, somewhat surgical subspecialty. And, and uh, as many of you know, there have been a, a lot of changes in uh, kind of the oversight and um, governance, if you will, of kind of how residencies are run. And there's, there's the pendulum is really swinging, still swinging towards a lot higher level of scrutiny and regulation and a lot more um, hoops that we have to jump through and a lot more uh, documentation. And, and um, uh, I think people used to be able to just, it was kind of the good old boys network where, yeah, we have a good residency and everybody knows it's good. and you know, and I, I've known him forever, and yeah, oh, I'd send my kid to his residency program any day, you know, that kind of thing. And well, those days are over. And so, as the, uh, the residents and faculty know, <coughs> we've been preparing for this basically since our last accreditation review, which was uh, five years ago. We received a four year accreditation last time, but it takes a while for everything to get processed. So, so essentially, it was five years. And, and then we have an internal review. The intern, the um, hospital, the medical school, GME, Graduate Medical Education Program, or Education Office, uh, monitors the residency programs as well because they're accredited based on how the residency programs do, among many other things. And uh, so uh, we really didn't have any major issues at our internal review two years ago, and that, and that went off very successfully, but uh, we had several we had three citations from our previous accreditation, and uh, one of the, probably the only real um, valid or concerning one is that we're, we're really low, our program is really low comparatively in the country in um, certain glaucoma procedures, and, th and there's a variety of reasons for that. Um, mostly being that we have a, comparatively, we have a very, we don't have a, a kind of an inner city hospital type experience where there are a lot of uh, underinsured or uninsured patients who have horrible glaucoma that's not been taken care of until end stage and there's a lot of, you know, we have a well insured compliant population that's mostly Caucasian. So, so there are a variety of reasons and, and to make a long story short, that was really our main concern and we've really done a lot better in uh, improving our glaucoma numbers. We're still pretty low. Uh, we're still, you know, in some areas like glaucoma laser, we're down around between the fifth and tenth percentile nationally compared to other um, other residency programs, but that's because there are a lot of these programs where you know residents are doing you know a hundred glaucoma <laughs> lasers or something. So so anyway, that's just that's an on that's a work in progress, and I think um, Camden and Snow Camden or is here are, are really trying to uh, both glaucoma fellows is here trying to work on improving that experience and being a little more proactive in making sure that we find those cases for residents. Um, and then our other, our other issues were really not issues that we were concerned about. Um, it, 
was one of those things. Sometimes it's anybody who's done any, any through any kind of regulatory process will understand that it, um, sometimes it's a guess what I'm thinking type thing, and you try to give all this documentation, and then they find something that they felt wasn't well documented. But our, our program was cited on, quote, ethics and advocacy, which actually our program is very strong. And so um, our site reviewer felt very uh, comfortable with our comprehensive response to those citations from our previous accreditation. And that, that was pretty much a non-issue with our, our site review. Um, and uh, really, the site reviewer didn't find any documentation <coughs> that was lacking. And, and uh, everything he asked for, we were able to provide him. So it was a very favorable review. And, and uh, he mentioned to our GME uh, people that he was impressed. So we're hopeful that we'll get a five-year accreditation now. So the, the process is, is not really just dependent on the site reviewer. He's just um, verifying that what we wrote down in our information that we submit to the uh, committee is, is actually, you know, he saw evidence of that while he was here. And so the way the process works is there's a review committee of I think there's only one non-ophthalmologist on the committee, and they're about seven members, mostly program directors with one resident, um, who will actually review our our body of evidence to see if they feel like our residency is, you know, what level of accreditation we're worthy of. And, and so two of the committee members will actually review our program and then present it to the, um, to the rest of the committee. That we're, we're not sure. We're going to find out if we're on the, we're, the committee only meets um, twice a year, and the next meeting is in October, so we're not sure if we'll be on the October agenda or not. We may have to wait until April. Um, but I, I want to um, just give feedback to the residents who met with the uh, site visitor. I think he appreciated, he felt like the residents were open and honest, which was, you know, I don't know what you guys told them, but but he felt like you weren't trying to, s you know, snow him. And same thing for the faculty. He felt that the faculty, a kind of a group of four faculty met with him, and, and he felt the same way. And again, just want to express my appreciation for all the faculty and residents, uh, especially fellows, too, for helping um, gather all of this documentation. And as we go forward, I think our challenge really as a residency is to um, kind of efficiently respond to this in increased regulatory uh, push and and use it to our advantage. And, and I really think since you know, I've been the program director since about 2003, um, I've seen a lot of improvements in our residency because of this. It's not necessarily a negative. And uh, many of the improvements have come from residents' suggestions. So. Um, you know, the more the residents can become involved in the process, the better. And I know our current residents do have interest in this. And so if there's a requirement or a, um, you know, as you get your kind of your outline for your next rotation and, and things don't seem to make sense or if you see a way that things can be improved, especially in documenting and achieving the goal of becoming better uh, trained, please let us know and give that feedback to your attending. And one of the challenges that we have is we're all really busy. Um, this is a really good residency program and we're all busy kind of independently and our spheres overlap a little bit. And sometimes we just don't, you know, kind of see the forest for the trees. And so we do appreciate feedback. Um, Dr. Petty, of course, is gonna be a great resource. He, for those of you who don't know, most of you do, but he's, he's the kind of associate program director now in fellowship program and will be um, part of our faculty after this year as a full-time educator, basically. So his whole role for our residency program is, is going to be teaching and administrative and improvement in, in all of these areas, whether it's didactics, uh, clinical learning, and then a lot of the administrative stuff that we do. And, and I, I, I can't, can't not give a special thanks to Jason, too, for his kind of trying to walk that, um, you know, fine wire at the VA of trying to please the, you know, the, um, 
bureaucracy at the VA and still protect residents. And I, I think things are moving in a positive direction at the VA in terms of balancing learning and service, and I hope that they'll continue to move that way. But I'd be happy to answer any questions. So our, our review was very favorable. We're very hopeful for a five-year accreditation. Um, we don't know until we, we hear, and it'll be a month or so after the committee. So we'll hear either in November or in May. Um, any questions? And I think Jeff has a, an announcement. Um, we, we don't tend to have a lot of talks. Yeah, so th it's mostly for residents, you're right. This is a, um, we are doing a retreat this year and we actually, we're going to head up to Snowbird um, at towards the end of September. And um, it, uh, okay, that's good. All right, so there's a fall retreat that's Snowbird, the lodge uh, at Snowbird Condos. That's where the residents will be staying. There's, there's group lodging there, although a lot of them are electing to have private rooms hoping for a romantic, you know, getaway weekend with their spouses. Um, for faculty interested, the Cliff Lodge is offering special um, pricing uh, for that weekend for you. It's a $99 program. Um, it, it, it's more or less, um, so all residents are required, all faculty are invited, uh, spouses, children uh, are welcome to come up. And it's, it's kind of going to be a pretty flexible weekend uh, for the faculty, um, just in terms of um, when you guys can and sort of can't uh, come up, because I, I know it's hard to commit a whole weekend to this, but basically Friday evening we're all going to get together, and this is uh, all faculty, spouses welcome. Um, we're actually, so the residents can be there with their spouses, we're going to have some sort of child care uh, available for that evening. Um, and then the next morning is just residents only. Uh, Dr. Hoffman is the babysitter. Dr. Hoffman is the babysitter, yes. He, uh, we didn't want to tell everyone that because they might not bring their children to spend time with them. But <laughs> uh, the next morning, it's really residents only, and, and we have some really good activities for them. Um, and then in the afternoon, we'll have a lunch. Faculty are welcome to come to that. Faculty are welcome for kind of the early afternoon session um, uh, that we'll be working on. And then after that, it's Oktoberfest weekend, uh, so the weekend of the 24th of Lots to do, and then in the evening we'll kind of uh, regather uh, just to you know have some sort of activity. Um, nothing terribly um, kind of deep or structured. And then the next morning uh, we're just going to have a big waffle breakfast in the morning for any of the faculty who want to come up and uh, kind of call it a weekend at that point. So, any questions? Yeah, the day's finalized. And last I hear. Again, all faculty are welcome. I understand that you wouldn't be able to necessarily make it for the whole weekend, but any of these um, spots would be nice. And really, really, really a special gigantic thank you goes out to the fellows who are helping to cover call that weekend so residents can be made available for this. And for their for the fellows' sake, this won't just be a big weekend party. We actually have some really valuable um, activities, <laughs> team building, uh, leadership, training that it's really going to be beneficial to us personally so anyway thank you uh, Gene and uh, any other of the fellows that are here that's very gracious of you all to volunteer to do this or to say yes anyway